in part two of this very special lake log episode, I'm still in Africa. You know, in here. The Swahili word safari means journey, and our journey would take us over 11,000 miles to Zambia. After our visit to Victoria Falls, we returned briefly to Lusaka and then took the short flight to Jeki Airstrip in the Lower Zambezi National Park to visit Chawa Camp and Old Mondoro, safari camps on the banks of the Zambezi. Before they land, bush pilots have to make sure no animals are wandering around on the runway. This is the main terminal building at Jeki. The loo is in this one. We met our guide, Johan, climbed into the waiting land cruiser, and set off into the bush to a boat that would take us down the Zambezi to Old Mondoro Camp. And it wasn't long before we saw our first wild African elephant. It was elephant number one. We were so excited, and Johan kindly stopped so we could photograph number one as it ambled along. We had no idea just how many elephants we would see, and there was another one right by the boat dock. Headed down the Zambezi, we see our first wild hippos. Lots of hippos. Huge crocodiles. And more elephants. Before we arrived at Old Mondoro, From this point, I could give you a day-to-day journal of our experience in the camps. I could talk about the delicious food, the comfortable beds, the overall stunning design of the entire thing. But that's not why you go on safari. You go on safari to see the wildlife. The comfort and atmosphere that the camp creates allows the visitor to focus 100% of their attention on the animals. This isn't roughing it on safari. This is safari tourism. It's the camp staff who roughs it. Long days, long shifts, so that the visitors are as comfortable as possible and enjoy the experience. And we did. Lake Log is a safari as well. It's a journey into the natural world to learn more about it, no matter where that takes me. And in the spirit of that exploration, I'd like to share some of the things I learned at Chawa Camp and Old Mondoro, 4,000 miles away on the other side of the world. In the bush, every animal at some point in its life is a potential victim of some other animal, and humans are no exception. Safaris are really quite safe, and Chawa safari camps have a perfect safety record, but there are a few simple rules to follow. Don't walk around unescorted. Don't exit the vehicle until the guide says it's safe to do so. And absolutely no swimming, wading in, or hanging around near the edge of the Zambezi, ever. No swimming. This one was a no-brainer, as the river is full of hippos and crocodiles. While crocodiles are understandably dangerous and kill an estimated 300 people a year in Africa and about 1,000 worldwide, hippos kill even more and are far more dangerous. African crocodiles can grow to a massive 14 feet in length and weigh in at a hefty 900 pounds.
Like the American alligator, they often stalk land prey from the shallows. Although when they are basking and regulating their body temperature, they can seem oblivious to what is happening around them. These impala are assessing this croc's threat level. There are lots of impala in the national park, so many so that they are almost ignored by guides and experienced guests. They're kind of like squirrels in the city and are an abundant food source for crocodiles, lions, leopards, and wild dogs, if they can catch them. There are 28 species of crocodilians in the world, but only two species of hippopotamus, a name that comes from the Greek word for river horse, although the hippo is not related to horses at all. Hippos are more closely related to cetaceans, like whales and dolphins. Growing to a size of over 3,000 pounds, they are formidable in and out of the water, capable of holding their breath for up to five minutes, and able to run on land at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour. They can't float, and they don't actually swim, but spend most of their time in the water, leaving at dusk to travel inland and feed. In the water, hippos are territorial and congregate in large groups overseen by a dominant bull. This territorial nature can make them aggressive towards boats, and an estimated 500 people are killed each year by hippos. That's 50 times more than are killed by sharks. To keep themselves and their guests safe, camp guides give hippos a wide berth and lots of respect. When we saw them and they saw us, hippos on the bank would launch themselves in the water in spectacular belly flops, or if lazing on the sandbars, like this group, would get up and run full speed into deeper water. It's important to remember that with all this talk of deadly animals, over 750,000 people die from mosquito bites and 150 people a year die from falling coconuts. The most dangerous animal in Africa is the Cape Buffalo, or as our guide Marshall called it, the animal that never smiles. A bull Cape Buffalo can weigh in at close to 2,000 pounds and be almost 11 feet long. Horns on the males come very close together at the base, forming what is known as a boss, kind of like a built-in crash helmet. Cape buffalo cows do not have this characteristic and are generally smaller in size than the bulls. They are seldom found far from water, and so the Zambezi and its feeder creeks, streams, and tributaries are a perfect habitat for the Cape buffalo. They are considered to be the most dangerous because they can be unpredictable. An elephant will put on a display, flapping its ears, swinging its trunk back and forth. But the Cape Buffalo, as camp guides told us, won't give any indication that it's about to charge. All of a sudden, it's just coming at you. Yeah, that so serious. Yeah. Oh yeah, they never smile. <laughs> Their eyesight is poor, but they have a good sense of smell, and we often saw Cape Buffalo herds stop and stare from a distance, smelling us before they could make us out clearly. I watched this bull as it smeared mud on its horn boss, probably to keep parasites away. Then, with its horns properly muddied, it munched aquatic grasses with an African jacana close by. When I looked up, I saw another bull watching me from the edge of the trees. Or maybe it was just smelling me. And even if the Cape Buffalo is the meanest, scariest animal in the bush, it doesn't matter one bit to the red-billed oxpecker. This little bird hitches a ride on the buffalo, picking off insects no matter where they are. Climb into a Cape Buffalo's nostril? No problem. If it's annoyed, it'll let you know. The wonders of the African bush never seem to cease young male impala testing each other in the presence of a female. 
we spent a few minutes with the incredibly beautiful kudu and the rarely seen bush pig. And then there's the birds. There are a couple hundred different species of birds in Africa, and I only saw a small sample of them. African birds are peculiar and perplexing. Iridescent colors that don't seem to fit with the muted color palette of the African bush. Strange anatomical features. Every one of them fascinating. Camp guides are excellent birders and shared so much information about every bird that we saw. But still, when I got home, I had a lot more research to do. On our first day there, I recorded a black drongo, and then a pied kingfisher. Later, there was the dull-colored gray lorry, the go-away bird, and the iridescent Maeve's glossy starling. And one of my absolute favorites, the white-fronted bee-eater. The national bird of Zambia is the fish eagle. They are very much like our osprey here, but don't feed exclusively on fish, and they are bigger, with a wingspan of six or seven feet. They are sometimes known to be kleptoparasitic and will steal the catch of this bird, the goliath heron. Goliath herons, cousin to our great blue herons here, are the biggest herons in the world. Their wingspan is as big as the fish eagle, six to seven feet and they hunt in a similar way to our herons, patiently stalking fish in shallow water. There are over 20 different hornbill species in Africa. We saw just a few of them. This is the crowned hornbill. And this is the red-billed hornbill, the inspiration for the character Zazu in the Lion King movies. But this one didn't talk, at least not while we were watching. These are southern ground hornbills on the ground, living up to their name, the biggest hornbill species in the world. Their wingspan ranges from three to five feet. And these are males, distinguished by the deep red color. They are carnivorous and do all of their hunting and feeding on the ground, and they have an average lifespan of up to 30 years. But the oldest one in captivity lived to be 70. Slow-moving yellow-billed storks. This African spoonbill wants to hang with the cool crowd. There are common egrets too. Some walk carefully with giants, and some surf on them. This little one is the water dickup. And this one is the open-billed stork, appropriately named. I mentioned the African Chicana before. This one, glad that the Cape Buffalo is a vegetarian. This is the fantastically colorful little bee-eater, perched on an abstract expressionist log. And I got a fleeting glimpse of a brown-hooded kingfisher, but this is the Malachite Kingfisher, seemingly out of place, truly remarkable, and just as brightly colored as you see here. Fantastic. And these are just some of the birds that inhabit the Lower Zambezi National Park. And did I see any trash in that national park? No. In the next episode, we do some canoeing on the Zambezi, get very close to some big cats, some wild dogs, and more elephants than I could ever imagine.
I went to Zambia with the Fambia. And we had a really great Tambia. <laughs> this is why you don't have a lot of subscribers, Dean. <laughs>